What's up guys, this is Boondocks, and right now I'm going to be showing off my farming run. You might be asking what exactly am I farming, and that's the Satchel of Supplies. The reason I'm doing this is because in Malgrave, there's a higher chance of a specific amp called Trigger Fingers dropping not only from the enemies you kill, but from the Satchel of Supplies, which usually will fill with an amp. So, for starters, this is my general layout for my build. Um, I take tier 4 into quick draw to get a little bit of increased movement speed. It's not that big of a deal though. Uh, I take charge shot max tier 8 just to do a ridiculous amount of damage right off the rip. If you look at the numbers right there, that's adding up to almost uh, uh, close to 10,000 damage. Uh, then I'm going to take rapid fire and wild barrage i'm taking these just as an aoe ability and flame burst as a free extra damage the main thing that i'm taking though is tier 8 assassinate the reason i'm taking tier 8 assassinate is because whenever i have i get three charges and whenever i kill an enemy with assassinate it refreshes all my charges and that's excellent I'm then going to take Void Slip for utility, just in case I pull something I shouldn't. And then Rune Killing, just to help keep myself up in between. Now, I have a pretty specific route that I typically like to run. Uh, and the trick here is, you just got to keep queuing up for these challenges. The main thing that I learned recently, <clears throat> is that when it comes to challenges, you don't actually have to beat them. For instance, this particular challenge is set for about five minutes. That's not that big of a deal if you sit here the whole time and try to get 100%, get the gold reward, and uh, try to kill them all. I mean, it'll take five minutes. The trick here, though, is that I could probably get bronze in about a minute and a half, two minutes. And then if I leave the area... I can actually turn in just that bronze reward and not have to wait the whole five. And this is comes very nice with certain challenges that it's almost impossible to get the gold reward on. And I don't know why they're as difficult as they are, but they, they are out there. So the real trick is to just burn down all the enemies, loot as much shit as you can, and keep pushing on. Alright, so for whatever reason, there's not that many enemies around, so I'm also going to start up this particular challenge as well, which will then let me loot these little bastards, and all you need is five of them for the bronze reward. With these types of challenges, sometimes you might want to sit and collect the extra ones just to get all the way up to, say, silver. Uh, I believe this goes, yeah, 5, 10, 15. So while I don't think I would push all the way to try to get to uh, 15. Getting the extra 5 or so as I'm going around killing these guys might be possible. But chances are I'm just going to leave the area as quick as I can. This has already taken me a little bit longer than I wanted to. I think it's probably because uh, like that one exile guy that was over there. I think he probably came through and killed a bunch of shit before I got here. Okay, so I already got bronze with that. So I don't need to keep going with it. I take Void Slip to just drop any aggro that I might not want to have. I don't know why that didn't pop me in and out. So yeah, it took me just over two minutes, but that's because I wasn't really paying attention. Plus it's a little bit harder to do as I'm talking. That's no real good excuse though. So now we just wait until we get out of the area. It says, warning, you're leaving the area. So, originally when I first started playing, I thought that this would make it so that I fail. Fortunately, it doesn't. So then all you gotta do is click Loot Reward, Satchel of Scavenge Supplies, and hopefully I get it. I typically find that the difference between uh, trying to grind for the higher ones versus the lower doesn't really make sense. Now, yes, if you were to get a gold reward, you'd have a times 10. So I might have a higher chance of getting it, but the amount of time that I would spend in total isn't really worthwhile. For instance, this run in total will take just about just under 30 minutes. 
in in that 30 minute time i'm actually going to complete 11 challenges and all things considered that's a pretty substantial number i i'm stupid and i didn't friggin uh, start this quest up whatever solve that that's obviously going to add on a little bit of time whatever hopefully i don't do it again i've been known to do that even when i'm not recording probably because i'm stupid yeah that that seems the most reasonable reason so right there i just killed that one enemy with a, a single shot because it was my charged up burst shot here so these enemies definitely melt obviously i am 10 levels above them so that's the main reason why they die so quick but even with going up against level 50 mobs i have no problem killing them and pushing through really fast with this build mostly just because of the assassinate as soon as you get an enemy down to about 12,000 life you can pretty much just finish them off just by spamming it the main thing though is if there's a larger group of uh, enemies that you don't hit one that's at a higher health because then you're not going to get the reset on assassinate if they don't die okay so finish another challenge and moving on take a sip of my coffee there it's actually gone which is depressing <clears throat> so this is actually a higher level area up on top here it's kind of divided by like the skeleton right there there's actually a world event that'll take place every so often where like a meteor crashes and then a bunch of like fire creatures spawn and blah 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 so we come up here and we start this one and start this one and we just proceed to kill these bastards so there's actually two separate uh, kill quests here. One is for these flame callers that I'm about to shoot right now. And the other one is for augmented assholes. Uh, not assholes. Augmented creatures, which is that first guy that I killed. But since they're right next to each other, you might as well just start them both up at the same time. Oh my god, where the heck did that knockdown come from? There's no telegraph. Okay, so right there I played it a little bit risky because I spread out the attack across two different enemies and that becomes a little bit dangerous uh, for some reason my second quest or second challenge isn't showing up so what I'm gonna do is focus on killing these guys first and foremost and then switch over even if it means that I fail the second one, I could just run back. It's not too bad. These guys are technically out of range. So I just come down, shoot them once, back up a little bit. <clears throat> so this is pretty much the, the start of this run you could probably do this at lower levels too and if you were to do it at lower levels then you could actually gain a lot of experience just doing this the main thing is you probably won't be able to burst down the enemies quite as much okay, just wait for this to reset loot reward man I, how many have I gotten so far so I've done four quests and I've gotten out of those four just by doing the bronze I've already gotten three satchels so that just goes to show that like I said there's no reason to fight all the way to gold level especially when you're just trying to go for the quote-unquote most likely outcome aka the first two or the best chance slot 
whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're the trade skills and the satchel of supplies. Both of those have a higher chance base level to be dropped. Because of that, you don't need to power level all the way up to get the end result. So I could stop and farm that up, but I don't really feel like it. And on my particular server, uh, those are actually selling worse than if I were to just vendor them, which is about 750 gold, or 750 gold, I wish. They're only about uh, 7.5 gold for a stack of 100, so it's not really worth my time to go out of the way when making a video. If I was by myself, I am by myself, if I wasn't making a video, then I would definitely stop and farm that shit up. The other nice thing is, by doing this, you have noticed I've been picking up a lot of different signs, including the epic level signs, and there's also a lot of gear drops. Also, during the turn-ins, you're obviously not always going to land on a satchel. Instead, you'll land on the different gear uh, drops for the given things. For instance, with this loot reward, I can get these shoulders, which if I sell them, it's 1.4 gold. Not to mention all the enemies will also have a chance of dropping items that you could then vendor off. Or, if your server has uh, decent prices on salvaged items, then feel free to salvage them. And if you're like me and you're a die whore, you could pick up a bunch of dies. I've already got that one, sadly. And for whatever reason, they're soulbound, which kind of sucks. Because I would much prefer to be able to sell that shit, but it's still 10 silver. 10 silver is 10 silver. What I was really getting at before is that in about an hour of doing this, if you get a little bit lucky, you'll make anywhere between 80 gold to one plat. The 80 gold is obviously a little bit on the lower side. That's the less luck. But just from the junk alone, there's probably close to... Okay, what? why isn't that working? Why aren't my buttons working? Uh, like, what? what's going on there? Okay, there it goes. So yeah, just from like the coin drops in general, I, I'm i stupid and I did it again. Look at that, I did it again. I'm an idiot. <clears throat> but just from the coin drops, I've already made about three gold. And then if you were to look at all the junk in my inventory, I've got about another four or five gold already sitting there. And then if you were to look at the items that I have dropped, I've already got another about four gold. So... In total, that's about, what, we'll say anywhere between 10 and 13 gold, give or take. And how long have I really been doing this? Especially if I wasn't stupid and didn't kill groups without uh, <laughs> starting the quest. So this one, feel free to skip if you're following this route. Uh, I don't know, it, it just... To me, it feels like it takes a little bit longer. Probably because you got to kill so many of these little bastards, even though they die quicker than some of the other enemies we've been fighting. I don't know. Wow, this is lagging. Thank you very much, Fraps. I never have issues with lag in this game. Not until I start Fraps. And it's just visual lag, too. Though my Fraps counter is saying I'm at friggin 35 frames per second which is doable obviously that's not optimal considering I'm used to you know 60 but I could deal with it but that's definitely lower than 35 frames per second I don't care who the hell you are <clears throat> so I I in all honesty, haven't been using my Assassinate nearly as much as I should. Uh, 
maybe because I've been talking and I haven't really been paying attention, you do kind of have to watch enemy health levels to know when you can use it effectively and get the reset. Alright, so now that these little uh, chompacabras are dead, I just come over this trail here. And drop down over on the back side of these enemies. I said drop down. Okay, be careful. There's the elite guy right there. So don't let that person spawn. Go to loot rewards. Loot. Okay, counterterrorism. Really, I got another freaking die. I never get this many dies. See, I didn't pay attention to my count that time, and I paid the consequence. Not only did I lose a lot of health, but now my Assassinate is on cooldown. Assassinate has a different type of cooldown, though. It's technically on a charge counter. It can hold up to uh, five charges. And, okay, I, well, I want those, because... Well, that's a piece of shit. It's only worth one. Delete. What the heck is this? Okay. Well, oh my god. I really hope that didn't just mess up my recording. Really hope that did not mess up my recording. I don't think so. Okay, I'm hoping that there's a vendor over here, which there's not. Okay, so I'm going to show my little trick to being able to uh, vendor the shit off in the middle of a run. Now, I could go to the top here and run over. There are vendors up over there, but instead... I'm just going to go to my house. And then from my house, I'm going to go to my neighbor, Skitten, from my previous video. Where's my neighbors? Skitten. Even though she's not on, I can still visit her house. And Skitten, off in the corner here, has a vendor. This will open up a lot of my bag slot for me. I don't know why all of a sudden it started to lag. This is really starting to piss me off. So most of this shit I recommend just selling. Uh, you might want to harvest the shit that you can use for crafting. But in general you're not going to need it. Um, yeah, that best suggestion. Just farm that shit out. All right, let's uh, open some of these bastards. Highly, highly doubt I'll ever get the things I need, but I didn't get any amps. That's weird. That's really weird. Usually I get at least like two amps out of three bags like that. That's kind of messed up. Oh, that's 14. That's pretty good. I'm going to put that in my bank later. Okay, so these BOE bags, uh, you can usually sell those on the auction house for a decent chunk of gold. So it's a nice little thing that pops out of those satchels as well. Oh my god, what the hell? Turn around. <clears throat> so it's not that big a deal. Just when I head back, I'm going to reset my quest, or my challenge rather, and kill a bunch of enemies, be good to go. Okay, so counterterrorism. Take two. Uh, gotta love charge shot. It's just, whoa, why the heck did it go? Okay, whatever. That was because of lag. I know it, and it's depressing. So basically, what happened there was I clicked the button, and I didn't see it going, so I didn't trust it, and I clicked the button again, which made it fire off. I 
as you can see, it does pretty ridiculous damage. So there's actually another quest here. Typically wait until I clear out that this guy right here and then I'll start the next quest. The next one is one of the rare ones too where you don't actually have to like go through your menu every time to reactivate it. All you have to do is click on the little dealie on the ground. And it's these. You set these little like trash heaps on fire. I should have just run around. So this one actually gives you about two and a half minutes to complete. Uh, if you know where to go just to burn these things, it will take you nowhere near that time to even get gold. You can really get gold on this one in about a minute. So it's one of the few that I actually recommend getting gold on just because the amount of time wasted is nowhere near an issue, I guess is the best way to put it. Come on, use it. Well, I definitely messed that up. Not, not the biggest deal ever, though. Oh, uh, well... I've already got in bronze on the Eco Terrace. So, all I need to do now is collect these little bastards and it'll be good to go. I'm going to do one of my at on that. Okay, just shy of six. Come on. Sometimes, like, this game bugs me because the bar, your cast bar, will fill up. And then you take one quick step and realize that, oh, it wasn't actually full. You have to, like, wait a fraction of a second after it's full before it actually goes off. And eh, it's just kind of annoying. It's not. It's obviously not the biggest deal in the world. But I'm used to having the quicker response times. So remember playing World of Warcraft back in the day? You could mount up sometimes, and if you did it... Oh, I just missed the elevator. If you mounted up at the right time on, like, say, a dragon, they wouldn't flap their wings or even run. They would just have, like, their sitting-in-place animation, and you could fly around on them. I used to always think that was funny as hell. So this is also where you can get the Magma Flow Fab Kit. Uh, which looks actually pretty damn cool. I've yet to actually win it here. I'm sure it wouldn't be an issue, though, if I were to just select it, but whatever. I did get one amp. These are some amps I got earlier. Not really worth my time. I usually wait until uh, I finish doing these runs before I open the satchels, and that's because... They're usually full of, like, meat and shit, and that takes up a lot of bag space. Bag space that I want to have for myself. All right, so for the next step, we're just going to come over here and kill a bunch of spiders. And this is the third to last one. Uh, this one's relatively quick. And the last two are also relatively quick, but it's a little bit of a trip just to get over to them. That's the main issue. The last one is deceiving as well because you almost want to think that it's taking you a longer amount of time than it really is. Wow, this is, I accidentally like attacked an elite, but whatever. I'll kill them and see how much we actually get. And this will also demonstrate why you don't want to fight elites. Because as you can see, it's taking a lot more damage than the average enemy. I didn't even get the assassinate right on him. Well, he gave me about 40%. Now let's see how much a regular group of enemies gives me. And just pop that. Right there. Gave me 
another 30% just from that group, which died a lot quicker and was a lot safer to do. Because, I mean, hell, that elite took out half my life. So the reason I'm spell surging the charge shot is purely because it reduces the cooldown to, or not the cooldown, the charge time to about, I think it's like 2.3 seconds or something like that, just by uh, spell surging it. And if you don't spell surge it, then it takes about 4 seconds to reach max stack. And the max stack is how you do the most damage, obviously. Alright, so that one's done. Nice and quick. And then you just come over and you follow this little yellow brick road in front of us. There's supposedly a high drop chance to collect the trigger figure amp from these things called uh, stone shell runts or stoneback runts, something like that, which are found right up here. Uh, it's supposed to, according to online, it said it had like a 1 in 303 uh, kills to drop it. I've killed roughly 3,000 of them, and no luck. It's kind of depressing. Okay, so here's the second to last one. It's the Merg Slayer. See how much longer that sucker... Oh, no, I still had that charged. Ha! Huh, I'm stupid. I usually... I do that pretty often where I'll keep clicking the assassinate button and waste a charge. But by the time I get another kill, it's usually up again anyway. So it doesn't really affect me, but... It's just another demonstration of how dumb I am. Yay. <laughs> Okay, well, I did click the spell surge off, but didn't register, whatever. So, the one thing that I dislike about the spell surge on, uh, on my spell slinger here is the fact that it shares, like, the small internal cooldown that the game runs on. By that, I mean... If I just cast an ability, I can't immediately click it. It's, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like I have to actually cast the ability to turn it on and off. And it just seems counterproductive to me. Alright, so that quest is done. I mean, each one only takes about 30 seconds. Really, the most time that you spend is traveling in between groups if other people have come through the area already and killed them. And then going from one challenge to the next. I've only... I actually haven't made all that much gold this run. And I got another shit bag. Damn it. Okay. Last one is called the Spirited Climb. This one's really easy. You just mount up and go around the path. I, and like these enemies that quote unquote attack, you don't do shit. I used to do this one when I was level 43, just because you mount up, go around the spiral. This one seems like it takes a really long time. It's really, again, only about a minute and a half, and then you'll be done with this one. And I just got I want to change up my music real quick. Ah, uh, going around the mountain when she comes. Going around the mountain when she comes. Or however the fuck that song goes. I haven't heard that shit since I was like seven. Oh, she'll be coming around the mountain or something like that, right? Ah, that was horrible. Horrible lag. I love the art style. I mean, 
It's like cell shaded, but not. It. I, I don't know. I just love it. I love this game. Even with the bugs, even with spending ridiculous amount of time trying to farm up this goddamn ant. And I love this song. It took me a little bit longer to get to the top, mostly because I stopped to listen to my music. But, whatever. This one you'll obviously get a gold on, just because... You know, why wouldn't you? Alright, so now that you're done, I can show... Cooldowns. Where's the one that we started with? So here's the first one we did. Scrapping the scrap. It's still on a 3 minute and 44 second cooldown. These are on a 30 minute cooldown, which means that it took me less than 30 minutes to do all these challenges. So, because of that, I, I didn't actually count the number of satchels I got, and to be honest, this time I actually got a really low number, percentage-wise. Uh, but you have to figure, even if you get half of them as satchels, that means that in a, uh, what, 26 minute time frame you get five satchels so five chances at the amp right there and that's minimum five satchels typically we we'll get more okay let me first vendor off a bunch of shit because don't want to open stuff and then have it like get mailed to me afterwards that's always a pain in the ass so I got Shade Slate. I got some good stuff, too, out of that, uh, out of my crafting bag. So I'm not too upset about that, even though I would have preferred having more chances at amps. So I have my Void Slip macroed to my mouse wheel, which is why sometimes when I'm scrolling, it friggin', like, activates. And that's paying the dick. Alright. So sell this shit off. Basically, the only reason I'm trying to sell off all of this, too. Oh, damn it. So, I did get a spell slinger ramp. It's definitely not what I needed. But, whatever. The real reason I'm just trying to sell this off is to show how much gold I actually made in the meantime, too. Okay, so I didn't get all that many item drops this run through, but I made almost 20 gold in 26 minutes, and I have one, two, three bags. On my server, each one of these bags sells for about two gold a piece, uh, and then between all these amps that I got as well, which, depending on how much people are spending on them, can get me anywhere between like 50 silver and six gold so in the grand scheme of things i'll say with with this run you make about a gold per minute obviously that'll change from server to server but i feel like it's a good way to try to farm up the trigger fingers app amp along with making a little bit of gold along the way so anyways guys good luck have fun peace